Hello and welcome to the very first episode of This Is Private Practice for 2018. I am outside today um, and it's in the middle of the day. It is stinking friggin' hot. I am in the east coast of Australia, but what's hilarious is that it's been so dank and cloudy and humid all morning. We've closed the house up, we've closed the office up to try and feel a little safe from the humidity. Um, so there's no light inside and it's very grey and I've just come outside to create this video and of course the sun's come out so there's shadows all over my face and dappled light and all the videographers out there are going to be going, Joe, you've got to change that, you've got to change that. But alas, we know that not everything goes perfectly well in private practice every single moment of every single day, do we? But welcome to 2018. Have you had a good break? Did you take a break? Did you plan to take a break? decided not to take a break, got sick and were forced to take a break, had that conversation with somebody this morning and I know she's not alone because I know that that's something that a lot of us do. Well I've come prepared today, I've actually got some notes because I want this to be a, a thoughtful video, not just a Joe Ranty video. So I know many of you will have been engaging in my posts over the last couple of weeks about goal setting and I'm a big goal setter. I love setting goals. Actually, not, that's not true. I love achieving goals. I hate not achieving goals. Setting goals for me is all about the achievement of the goals. It's not about anything else. I love the sense of satisfaction. I love that sense of achievement. Um, it lights me up, as you can tell, and I get very frustrated and irritated when goal progress isn't going the way I wanted it to go. Uh, I am a work in progress and I am still learning, so there are goals that I have not achieved, but I'm learning how to achieve them. And I received an email that is kind of forming the basis of this um, video today. And I received it from Ariana Huffington, who is now um, the, the, the founder of the Thrive Global Community. And I love the Thrive Global Community. I am a contributing writer for the community and, and I love everything. It's, it's really helped me understand that this epidemic of burnout that we're all living with is not just something that's in my head, that lots of people are talking about it and it is a worldwide health issue. Anyway, that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to give us a pause and reflect on our goals for 2018 by looking at some of our things and stuff and behaviors and triggers of 2017. So I don't know about you, but when I get really disappointed, I don't know if you can hear the cicadas, they're really loud. There's also a couple of air conditioning units going on. I hope that's not too irritating. Anywho. When you get really disappointed at not achieving a goal or not hitting a goal, it's very easy to just push it away and pretend it didn't happen and put it in the hurt bucket and of the bucket of hurt that we don't want to talk about and we just come up with new plans, new ideas. And I see this happening all the time with clinicians and professionals and coaches who decide that they're going to do an alternative income stream to one-on-one -on -one, uh, work, one-on-one -on -one delivery of work and they try something once and it didn't work the way they thought it would work the very first time that they did it when they've never done it before and then they just decide that they'll never do it again because it didn't work. So they put it in the hurt bucket or the bucket of hurt. So if you haven't achieved goals this year or even if you've overachieved on goals this year, what's been going on for you? What's led to that attainment or that non-attainment? So one of the really awesome questions we can start asking is what was the most important lesson that you learned in 2017? So for me, what I've learned is that my work addiction stuff still comes up. When I get scared, uncomfortable, unsure of myself in a personal relationship, in a work relationship, when I am going to do something that I've never done before, when I'm feeling fragile, I will go to work. Work is safe for me yeah go figure work is really really safe for me so I will go to work and what that means is I will keep saying yes to work so right now in January of 2018 I have twice as many clinical clients than I know is healthy for me now they're all going to get served and they're, I've changed other parts of my business and my life to make sure that I can do this work well because I choose to be an exceptionally good clinician and that means serving my clients well 
And there are a few things that led up to that it, towards the end of last year and I was being triggered and I was being triggered in ways that I didn't know were going to happen because I was doing new things I hadn't done before. So it's interesting for me to know that my default will always be to say yes to work. So when my husband says to me, Joe, you've been to the States for a couple of weeks before Christmas, you've come home really sick, you need to have two weeks off. I struggled with that. I so struggled with that. I, all the things and the stuff that I wanted to do in my two weeks off that wasn't work, so to speak. But I'm so glad he made me do it. And I'm so glad I agreed to do it and didn't fight him too much on it because I am so much more refreshed. And I've been to yoga today and I'm so much more ready to tackle the complexities that are going to come up this year because I have a multi-clinician business. I have three events scheduled for this year. I am running private practice clients. I have a child that's about to start university or not or will or not. I've got a busy life. So there's, there's things that are going to be complicated, there's lots of moving parts this year. So if I know that about myself, if I know that my default is to always go back to work, then I can be watching out for it because if I'm aware of it, then I can do something useful with that information. So what was a really joyful moment for you in 2017? So for me, that was a conversation I got to have with Anthony, my son, when he was advised of his university entrance results. That was such a joyful moment for me. Um, he was in Japan and I was in Australia when that happened, so yay for the internet. Um, and I'm just so grateful that I got to be a part of that conversation. That was just full of joy and thinking about it still fills me with incredible joy. But what was the most challenging thing for me in 2017? I think the most challenging thing for me was changing over my practice manager from the awesome Natalie to the awesome Sophie and carrying three full-time equivalent salaries for a three-month period. My business isn't based on salaried employment, it's based on subcontractors. I've done that and chosen to do that on purpose, it's what I know. So having to carry three full-time salaries for a three-month period was a huge chunk of change for me. Huge. I was terrified. But then I was terrified the very first time I was going to do two full-time salaries. And I was terrified the very first time I put myself onto a salary. So I'm thinking when I do three full-time salaries ongoing, it's not going to be as difficult. But if I ever get to the point where I want to do four full-time salaries, I reckon that's going to be scary. That was really challenging for me. Learning how to manage the cash and the cash flow and the budgeting and the budgeting and the budgeting and the where's the money coming from. Oh lordy, there's some learning to be done there. It's a skill. It's not natural to me. Wow, perspiration is beautiful. Hmm. Okay, did 2017 bring any experiences that changed your life? If so, what were they? Whew, it's warm out here. I think there were two things that were really significant for me in 2017, apart from carrying three full-time salaries. The first one was when I did the day without speech last February. I went a whole day without speaking as a, a awareness of raising for speech pathology services for the OIC project in Cambodia. That was so freaking confronting. And given that I work a lot with people who have experienced injury, illness and trauma who, who then live with disability for the rest of their life, that was just so eye-opening. And I think my compassion and empathy went through the roof. It certainly made me a lot more compassionate and thoughtful for one of my team members who's blind and hearing impaired and I'm always now coming from a place of how are we going to help Ross do this? How is this going to be useful for Ross? So that was pretty life-changing. And then there was the Evolution of Psychotherapy Conference in Anaheim back in December, which was intense and a lot of people. Uh, but being a part of that conference and, and getting to share that with some incredible people from the States and all over the world, meeting people from all over the world, understanding that health pr practitioners, especially mental health practi practitioners, want to serve the people of this planet so, so well. And we're looking for new answers because we know that the old way of doing things isn't necessarily the right way or is not necessarily going to work into the future. Um, watching my practice building clients have such incredible momentum around their products and services, that was awesome. I am so proud of those ladies. I'm so proud of what we've achieved. I'm so proud of what's going to happen this year for them. It's really exciting. Um, so for me, those two things last year were life changing. And this is a great question that I've been asked. What steps have I taken to get ready for this year, for this new year? Um, 
This is going to sound really trite, but I actually intentionally worked on resting and replenishing. Um, resting, because I'm not good at it, I... <laughs> boom bust is not balance people i've tried to work that out to say well if you boom then you can bust and then that's balancing each other out it's not helpful nor is it useful and i'm not so special that i can break that um rule so learning how to rest learning how to replenish myself and finding activities or finding ways to replenish because my default is to go back to work so i actually get replenished in my work but we all know I can't work 24 hours a day seven days a week because we all know and the research tells us that that's not healthy so I've prepared myself for this year I've got a big year and a massive map and plan that the awesome Sophie is going to be excited by this afternoon I've got my team to share it with I've got you guys that I want to share it with what we're doing over the next 12 months or so but I ask you to reflect on these questions today and I would love, love, love to know some of your responses. What are you working towards in 2018 and how has 2017 prepared you for that? And I'm more interested in you as a person right now than the things and the stuff. Does that make sense? How are you getting ready to be the best version of yourself you can be? How are you getting ready to serve all the people you want to serve? Actually, that was a massive shift for me as well. Late last year, I realized that income goals weren't doing it for me anymore. I was bored with them, mainly because I'm not achieving them. Um, so I had to think of what is it that income is about for me? And then it clicked. Income is about how many people we get to serve and how many people we get to help. It was a massive mindset shift for me. I'm all this year, I'm all about the numbers of people we're going to serve and the people we're going to help totally interrupted my call to action don't do that that's not good internet marketing let's come back <laughs> share with me share with me hit reply to this email put it in the comments below I'd love to know how I can support you I'd love to know how I can cheer you on let's make 2018 kind of spectacular <laughs>